Thanks, everybody, for joining today. Kyle Sauer Siemens is giving a presentation on the digital thread for Siemens solution offering, specifically focusing on the manufacturing capabilities of the digital thread and the Siemens product line. Okay. Thank you, Chris, uh, and thank you, all the attendees. Um, let's walk through the concept of digital transformation. So companies are fa facing huge transformation in, this, in these days in the way they are managed, in the way they produce product, and in the way they even think about a new product. So it's a very complex transformation that is called the uh, uh, digitalization of their processes and uh, is obviously a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. And um, uh, all the digital leaders know that uh, technology is important, but is not enough to succeed in this, in this transformation. So Siemens, as a, a, a vendor, has a very um, structured and, and consolidated software suite to face this digitalization concept. It is uh, the digital enterprise suite, and it goes from the very first step when a, a product is uh, conceived and is uh, designed, how the factory will be engineered and how it will be executed. All this software suite is the uh, uniqueness of the value proposition of Siemens in this field. Of course, this is not enough. I mean, technology we have seen is important. Siemens has a complete solution, but to really um, add value to its customers, Siemens decided to bring it to the market uh, together with its alliances like Hylasoft is. So uh, joining the uh, technology leadership with uh, a, a real M MOM practice a strong uh, practice in delivering MOM solution. In this way, we can bring our customers, joint customer to success. Let's see a little more in detail what is this software suite. So uh, you can see a lot of buzzwords, buzzwords very common in, the, in these days. Uh, mobility, Internet of Things, and cloud that gives you the ability to be always connected and to have smart devices can take decision or perform actions and the virtually unlimited computing capability. But what it means when you bring this into the shop floor? Well, it means that you can unify your application and your solutions on a unique uh, platform. So you are able to scale your application from a small functional footprint to a large functional foot footprint adding functionalities or starting from a small uh, area of your plant and then extend into the entire plant. Then the user experience, this is an essential part. Uh, the, the shop floor creates a, a huge amount of data, and this is the ability to aggregate those data at different level of granularity or providing different contexts in such a way it is uh, a set of KPIs that are actionable from a line operator, a maintenance manager, up to VP of operation. And the integration of the PLM and the manufacturing is a huge differentiator. Siemens is the only company who can provide a closed loop manufacturing concept. And of course, uh, focusing on the execution of the business processes. That means uh, really focusing on how a product is produced. Uh, obviously, this didn't happen overnight, so Siemens had a very long-term strategy with a holistic approach of uh, internal investment or external acquisitions in order to grow entire, um, along the entire uh, value chain in this uh, product definition, production, execution, and shipment to the market. Um, here we have a quick view of how the uh, digital enterprise suite is composed, the various components that goes along this value chain, and in particular on the execution area where the MES uh, is, is relevant, we have a pretty um, 
concentration of all the components that make up the value proposition. So how all this is possible? Um, as we have seen, there is the leadership technology, leadership of Siemens, and this is brought to the market together with, uh, uh, with uh, alliances, strategic alliances, and the container, the vehicle of doing this is MIAC. MIAC stands for MOM Expertise Alliance Center, where Siemens brings its technology and products, and the partners brings their um, uh, MOM practice, their uh, industry focus, their uh, specific skills, their uh, uh, delivery capabilities, their technolo uh, technology capabilities, their consulting uh, skills, and so on. All, this, all those skills are part of the uh, offering of MIAC. And uh, um, uh, obviously, uh, MIAC is not only a container, so Siemens supports its partner to build or grow their, um, their MOM practice through education and leveraging very, very well consolidated uh, processes in order to make smooth the management so, uh, of, the, of the entire, of the entire uh, activities. So MIAC is a, really a strategic uh, approach of Siemens in this field. And uh, MIAC was born around MOM, but of course it has uh, partners belonging to MIAC that have compet competencies also outside the pure MOM space, also in PLM, uh, shop floor, ERP. And Hylasoft is one of these partners who has those competencies uh, available at MIAC. And uh, Hylasoft will have the uh, will show you the capability of integrate your PLM to MES in discrete manufacturing. All right, thank you, Andrea. So my name is Matt Scanlon, and I am the PLM practice manager at Hylasoft. Before we get into our presentation, I would like to give a brief introduction about Hylosoft and what we focus on. Um, so Hylosoft is a systems integrator and partner of Siemens focusing specifically on manufacturing. So although Siemens has many partners in many different areas, we are only focusing on manufacturing PLM and Technomatics suite of products. We started working with Siemens about 20 years ago in the MES space, uh, working with the product Somatic IT. And our headquarters is in Genoa, Italy, which is the same uh, location as the MES headquarters uh, for Siemens. So naturally, we do a lot of work with, uh, with Siemens in that area. Uh, over the years, we've been growing the team and focusing on team center manufacturing and simulation tools in addition to MES uh, technologies. So these are the main areas that we work on today and we focus on. In the US, we are located in downtown Chicago uh, with about 65 consultants focusing on these manufacturing technologies. So let's start by introducing two concepts which you may have heard of already. The first is the phrase, the digital twin. And although the digital twin sounds fancy, it's really nothing more than a digital representation of something that exists in the real world. So for example, a 3D CAD model of a product such as this tractor is the digital twin of the real thing. But the digital twin does not just refer to objects or products, but also processes. A digital representation of a manufacturing process can be considered the digital twin of the real process that happens in the factory. The second concept I want to review is the digital thread. The digital thread is the idea of an organization creating, reusing, and building upon its data, resulting in a seamless flow of data between an organization's systems that until not so long ago, many of these systems were isolated. The digital thread starts with a model-based definition of the product 
This model, as well as other engineering data, can then be used and reused in our production planning, production engineering, and eventually the execution and service of the product. Throughout this presentation, we're going to review the digital thread in action. We'll be using a case study of a scenario that is familiar to many manufacturers, which is the commissioning of a new production line. So we'll show through live demonstrations of various Siemens PLM tools how the digital thread can deliver enormous business value to an industrial manufacturer ramping up a new production line. Now, although we'll be using the new production line scenario as our backdrop, the capabilities and value throughout this demo can be applied to day-to-day -day operations of new production design, engineering, manufacturing planning, and of course the execution. So what is the motivation? Why do, new, why do plants open, um, why do manufacturers open up new plants, new production lines? Certainly there's many possible reasons why they may undertake a project like this. The first is that a company may have a new product or program uh, similar to the use case that we'll be presenting on today. This new product may require new machines or additional space to manufacture that product. Another common reason is simply to expand production capacity in order to meet increased customer demand. And there also may be uh, business reasons to be either closer to your customers or closer to uh, suppliers in order to reduce travel times and be more efficient. And anyone that has ever been involved with starting up a new facility knows there's many challenges and potential pitfalls. First, there's the tasks of planning the new line layout. So manufacturers have to determine what processes and equipment are required to manufacture or assemble the final product. Then there's the positioning of work centers, machines, the equipment, and the space for people and material to travel. So everybody wants a sensible layout that minimizes non-value-added transportation of the material and people. And there's also a major challenge for the workforce and the people aspect. So it's difficult for operators to adjust and learn how to build a product that they've never seen before. In fact, it's a standard practice during new factory commissioning to account for efficiency loss during the first few months of production as employees are learning how to manufacture the products and new processes are tweaked and refined. So our case study is going to follow the story of a heavy machinery manufacturer opening a new production line in a building being added to an existing facility. So we'll show how the Siemens portfolio enables a digital thread to flow through the various engineering, manufacturing, and industrial planning tasks to open the new line and address the challenges associated with commissioning new production areas. So we'll start with the design of a new product and using the Siemens tools to manage the operations and equipment needed to produce the product. We'll then plan the layout of the line understanding the best way to organize the shop floor and optimize the layout. We'll then take a deeper dive into the individual processes that make up the line and determine where we can find optimizations. Finally, we'll prepare for the go live by looking at the training and production ramp up of the facility. Thank you, Matt. My name is Chris Draska. I'm one of the managers of the Hallisoft. I support both the Manufacturing Engineering Group and Manufacturing Operations Group. This presentation, I'm focusing on Team Center Manufacturing Process Planner and how that works into the digital thread story we're telling now. So as you can see on the left side, we're looking at you have Team Center data, uh, design data. This is what typically most customers are using today with regards to Team Center data management. It's to work with the design engineers, 
to support the, part, the piece parts or the assembly approvals of the products they're making. Our idea is to extend that capability to also support the manufacturing engineering group and how they're actually going to manufacture and or assemble uh, the product. So looking, working inside Team Center Manufacturing Process Planner, we can now extend the capabilities of Team Center to support the manufacturing engineering group. We can ship less and have the manufacturing engineers work sooner and earlier based on released engineering design data or parts to start planning for the potential assembly steps or fabrication steps needed to support this production go live. And then we can further look at taking the information defined by manufacturing engineer and validating it virtually to understand throughput or the ergonomics of the human interaction performing these tasks well before we even have spent time or money to stand up our physical environment. So we'll be looking at later on the capabilities of manufacturing process planner tied to process simulate as well as plant simulation and last manufacturing or somatic IT, which is the MES component. So everything now is going to start really driving, creating the content to be used for our storyboard within the digital thread for manufacturing solutions. And we'll take a brief moment here to, to look at Team Center Manufacturing and some of the data that we have modeled for this story. Back up. So what we're looking at now is Manufacturing Process Planner, which, which is a component inside Team Center where the Manufacturing Engineering Group would work. Our first tab here was looking at an engineering bill of materials. Not to get into details on the, the value and the discrepancy between having an E-bomb and an M-bomb, but first we're, we'd have a release engineering bill of materials, which is defined and created based on how you design the systems that make up this assembly. What we're looking at here next is our manufacturing product structure, or MBOM, which is configured and structured based on how you actually manufacture the product and takes into account other items that the design team doesn't care about. This product structure is owned by the manufacturing engineering group and supports the assembly or fabrication steps for the final product. From there, we can then start defining our bill of process. And if you look at the bottom, we have a bill of process structure that takes into account our top of a process, our sub-process, which we're looking at actual entire assembly. Inside there, we have what we call operations, which is a specific sequence of steps to, to perform that sub-assembly. And inside there, we are going to be consuming components from an engineering bomb but are, be but, but are pulled from our manufacturing product structure. And then that, taking it a step further, if we click on one of our operations, like the right-hand knuckle install, we can see we can have attachments or content associated to that specific operation that will be leveraged uh, for both simulation and execution. So we can have time study capabilities about the ergonomics and how long it's taking the human to perform these tasks that we can run through plant and process sim. We also can leverage some of the engineering 3D content to create product views and, and other work instruction data that we're seeing down here in the bottom right. So all these all this information packaged together creates a, manu a manufacturing bill of process, which starts to drive the downstream capabilities of Siemens to support the virtu virtualizing our process even before we built the four walls or the new line of this new product launch. What we just saw there is we worked inside Team Center, inside Manufacturing Process Planner. We wrote the, we wrote the role of the manufacturing engineer to go from release engineering bond to a manufacturing product structure, to a bill of process, and then we created some work instructions and 3D data based on some of the engineering information and new manufacturing content that's going to support the actual execution step. We would also be able to define time studies and other capabilities that can be used for validation of the ergonomics or the throughput of the plant, which we'll see next. And this is basically setting up the foundation for us to start our digital thread journey for digital manufacturing. Okay, thank you, Chris. <clears throat> so now that Team Center Manufacturing Process Planner has provided a definition of the manufacturing process, engineers can now study the behavior of the 2B production line. We will want to lay out the line and analyze how that line is going to operate. 
The tool that we can use for this scenario is called Technomatics Plant Simulation. So let's take a look at that tool now. So here we're looking at a layout that we have already defined within plant simulation based on how we believe this new line is going to look. So you can see that we have the floor modeled, we have the walls modeled, we have some of the rooms, we have fixtures, tables, some of the shelves. So there's a lot of elements of the manufacturing environment that we have brought in and assembled based on how we think this new line should operate. We also have stations that are modeled, so based off of the different sub-assemblies that we defined within Manufacturing Process Planner, we have each of those workstations modeled, as well as the data behind how those stations are going to operate, such as the cycle times, how long we believe it's going to take that operation to complete, uh, even failure rates, if we have a prediction as to how often we think the machines or the tools are going to fail, we can model that aspect in as well. I'm going to start the simulation and we'll see our tractors coming into the, into the line. And we can see here at the bottom, we have just the chassis of the tractor coming out. And if I speed up the simulation, we can see that we have operators that are coming out to man their stations. So in addition to the machines and the product itself being modeled, we also have the operators and even a shift a schedule defined to really define the correct constraints, not just on the machines and the process, but also of the people aspect as well. As the tractor is moving down the line, we can see that the model of the tractor is being updated. So first it has the engine assembly, and then there's an axle and tire assembly, radiator assembly. And after each of these stations, the model of the tractor is actually being updated to reflect the correct assembly for that process. Once the tractor has been completed and all of the assemblies have uh, finished, we see that at the end of the line, we have a completed tractor that's going through final inspection, and then it will leave the assembly line. So that's the basics of the line that we have modeled. And we can understand certain behaviors of this line now that we have the base model defined. One important factor in this simulation is the fact that this data that we have within the simulation is not within a silo. We are actually leveraging the data that we had just defined within Team Center Manufacturing. Some of that data that we're leveraging is the 3D models. So the model of the tractor itself is actually being imported from Team Center. We did not have to recreate the model for the simulation. The model of the factory as well is data that can be imported from Team Center and also of the processes, so of the different operations that we define within MPP and the times, the cycle times associated to those operations, we are able to leverage that and associate the data to our stations within the simulation model. So a lot of the data that we need in order to do the analysis on this production line is actually being leveraged and reused within Plant Sim. We're not recreating that data from scratch. One of the important elements that we can look at within our simulation is understanding utilization rates. So what percentage of the time our different stations are operating. So within our simulation, we have <clears throat> a chart that we can view that, as you can see, it's actually updating in real time. So as we're running the simulation, we can see the data on the chart being reflected. So I'm going to speed up the simulation, and we can see the data and the charts adjusting accordingly. And on this chart, we can see different colors representing different states of the station. So we have green indicating the station is working. Uh, we have uh, blue to indicate that there's 
planned downtime or unplanned downtime. The reds are indicating failures. So it gives us uh, indications as to which machines are working uh, and spending more of their time uh, doing value add, actually working on the assembly versus either being waiting or, or blocked. One of the important pieces of information that we can gather from this chart is the fact that our axle and tire assembly is actually working at a greater percentage of the time compared to our other stations. So we can already identify that we may have a potential bottleneck and a, an area that has potential improvement that we can look at to see is there a way that we can increase our overall throughput of this line by maybe improving the processes at that axle and tire assembly station. So to recap what we saw within plant simulation, we first validated the planned production line by importing our 3D CAD model of the facility and creating workstations that were defined within MPP. Then using analysis tools, we identified a potential bottleneck which could lead to process improvement, so that axle and tire assembly station that we saw within the utilization chart. But we were also able to extend the digital thread from Team Center Manufacturing Process Planner to designing our plant structure. So it's the first step in our digital thread leveraging that manufacturing data we had set up within Team Center Manufacturing. So as a next step in the digital thread, we can turn our attention to optimizing specific processes and operations within our new tractor assembly. So our plant simulation revealed a manufacturing bottleneck at our axle and tire assembly station. So industrial engineering should focus on this bottleneck operation if we want to improve the flow of the production line and increase our throughput. So the tool that we can use to analyze manufacturing processes is called process simulate. So we can use that tool to now see if we can optimize our axle and tire assembly station. So here is the tool Process Simulate. And you can see that we have a simulation, a model already defined of our axle and tire assembly stations. You can imagine this is a zoomed in view of that single station that we identified as the bottleneck within plant simulation. There's different resources, different elements that we have modeled within the simulation. First, you can see the tractor itself, the subassembly of the axle and tires is uh, sitting on a workstation. You can also see we have shelves and desks and various manufacturing resources uh, modeled within here. We have the operator that's modeled. But what's important to understand is that all of this data, all of this 3D uh, geometry that we're viewing was actually imported from Team Center. We did not have to recreate this from scratch. The product model that we see here sitting on the table is the design data that we had stored within Team Center, so the actual design uh, information that went into our Team Center uh, design data is being leveraged and was imported into this model. All of the manufacturing resources, so the tables, the tools, fixtures, all of those items that are defined within the Team Center module manufacturing resource library, or MRL for short, is also able to be leveraged. So we're taking advantage of that geometry of that data that was previously uh, created upstream. We are also able to import the process plan. So based off of the subassembly of the axle and tire, which we can see here in the lower left, this is an import of the data that we had defined 
within Manufacturing Process Planner. So we actually have the routing, the, the specific operations, and the times associated to those operations already imported and available to us within this simulation. So one of the things that we did within this simulation is we wanted to model the specific activities that this operator needs to perform in order to complete the operations of this subassembly. So we modeled that out, including having the operator walk over to the parts, pick up the parts, put them on the assembly, which I'm going to run the simulation now. And you can see that we have the operator following a specific path. He's going to pick up his first part. He's going to walk over to the subassembly. He's going to add that to the subassembly. He's going to pick up another part. And the reason why we are doing this modeling is that we can gather some information, some analytics about the behavior of this specific set of activities that make up this operation. The first is that we can do a time study. So we can use the data from MPP as our estimated times. So we can see what we originally allocated as the time to complete the subassembly. But we can compare that against the simulated time. So based off of all of the individual activities that this operator needs to perform, in order to complete the subassembly, we can view that data and compare it against our original assumptions. So we can see if maybe we had underestimated, we had maybe put too low of a number for how long the simulate how long the set of operations is going to take compared to our simulated time. Or it may be the opposite. Maybe originally we had overestimated, but based off of our simulation, we think it actually may be a bit quicker to complete the subassembly. So it gives us a time analysis comparison as another uh, means to understand how accurate our estimated cycle times are for the routing. The other piece of data that we can gather from the simulation is ergonomics. We can do health studies on these operations. So we see that the operator is currently colored yellow, and, that, and we saw during the simulation when he picked up one of the parts that his torso had turned yellow as well. So there's visual indicators during the simulation to tell us, are there any health risks based on the specific activities that the operator is doing? And in fact, it uses the OWAS standard, O-W-A-S, and you can see the numbers above the operator's head. This is an international standard on evaluating health risk and health uh, safety standards within the workplace for operators. So it allows us to predict and understand if there are any movements or mechanics that the operator is going to perform that may be of a health risk to him, and maybe there is a better way of performing those operations. Maybe we can change the location of where parts are going to be stored on the shelf. Maybe we can move some of the tables around to perhaps make the operation a bit more safer for the operator. One other piece of the simulation I'd like to point out is that we have the ability to simulate automated processes. So if we have robotics and automated assembly processes, we could also simulate that and test the behavior of the robot with other elements in our uh, simulation. So maybe looking at the kinematics, and looking at the movement of the robot to see if there's enough clearance compared to some other robots that are on the line or other manufacturing resources that are nearby. We are also capable of importing the robotic code that's going to run these robots and actually test out that code before the robot is ordered and actually put within the manufacturing uh, environment. So we're able to do what we call a virtual commissioning of the robot to test to make sure that the code is going to behave properly, the robot has enough space and is expected to uh, 
be well coordinated and interact with its environment in the way that we had originally designed for that robot. So to recap what we saw within Process Simulate, we simulated our specific operations and identified potential problems and opportunities for improvement. For any of the automated manufacturing processes, we saw how we can uh, program and test those processes. And we were able to extend the digital thread from manufacturing process planner to plant simulation, then to analyzing specific operations in process simulate. So we took a look at those specific operations within the axle entire assembly station to see if there's opportunities for improvement. The last step we want to demonstrate in our digital thread is the training and production ramp up of our new line. So having the operators prepared for the manufacturing processes we have defined in our routing will be key to the success of our new facility. We also want to provide them with a system that will guide them through the process during the ramp up period and also record all of the activities occurring on the shop floor that we can then analyze. The Siemens tool we will use to do this is called Somatic IT, which we'll now take a look at a demonstration of that tool now. <coughs> Uh, so this is Tyler Marcus. Um, I'm an MES consultant here at Hylosoft, uh, working on a few um, MES projects currently uh, in the discrete manufacturing uh, realm. So what we're going to do now is we're going to continue to follow along the digital thread. Um, for up until this point, it's been mostly virtual, you know, creating the bill of process, creating our bill of materials, our tools, materials, um, and then actually virtually approving those those processes out. Now what we're going to do is actually physically execute on those, those processes. So what we've done is we've taken that bill of process from Team Center, we've sent it up to the ERP system, and we've actually created a work order off of that. Um, so what we're looking at now is our operator landing page. So we can see here at the top in this gray bar, we actually have a work order that's been created and released to the shop floor so that an operator may actually physically work on it and track time, uh, collect the serial numbers of materials, collect the information to, about tools and data collection, and look at the actual electronic work instructions that were created inside of Team Center. So what we're looking at here um, is what the operator would see after they log in to their, their terminal or their portal at their workstation. So they have the ability to actually filter and search for uh, a specific work order to work on, or they could do a general search just searching by the actual work center that they're working at. Um, once they do the filtering for the work order, you can see they have information about that. So they can see a description, an identifier, uh, what machine they're actually working at, a machine or location, and then uh, the status of that work order. In this case, we're open and we're ready to actually start work on this operation. Secondly, we see um, a graphical view of the operations inside of this work order. So all these operations were created in Team Center and they were sequenced in Team Center. And we can see that those, that connection transfers over to the MES system on the shop floor. We can also see the status of both the operations before what we're working on and the operations in the future. So we can see that we have a completed operation, Operation 10, then we have multiple operations here in the future that need to be completed. Then here at the bottom we have our navigational buttons where we're able to view the details of their, the operation. Uh, we can start, pause, complete the operation, and then we have a few buttons dealing with nonconformance and change management, which we'll look at here in a second. So what I want to do as an operator, once I'm ready to start my work, I select my work order to work on. I'm actually ready to perform my work, what I'll do is I'll start that operation and time is then going to be started, track, started to be tracked against that work order, um, against that operation as myself as an operator. So we can see now the status of this work order is active, which means that timer has started. And I can actually go into the details of the operation 
and view what, what I'm supposed to perform. So I'll click the Go to Details button, and we can see we have information displayed both about this operation and the execution steps inside the operation. But well, first thing to note here at the top, we have information about the work order. So we have, we can see here on the left, we can we have our remaining time for the operation. These are the times that were uh, defined in Team Center and then actually proved out by using the process simulate and uh, plant simulation softwares. So these are theoretical times, and those times are located in the time analysis uh, module of Team Center and then brought down to the shop floor. Then on the right, we have some information, um, additional information about the work order. So the status, uh, the sequence, where we're actually performing this work, and then the material and the active users that are actually partaking in the work for this operation. So we can see if there was multiple operators working on this operation, they would all be listed here. But in this case, it's just this one operator that is working. Moving down the page, we can see we have a graphical um, representation of the, the work instructions on the right. So we have a static image. We can also attach video files so that your operator can view a video of the work that they're actually perform, performing. Um, in, in this instance, we have a process simulate video that is showing um, the operator actually taking the parts from a table and then moving them onto the actual assembly. So if we actually start work on this operation, what we're going to do is actually start from the first execution step. So we can see that at each, at each operation level, in each execution step level, we have um, at each execution step level, we have individual work instructions for each, uh, for each operation in each execution step. So we can have a de individual descriptions, parts, materials, tools, uh, electronic work instructions for each and every one. So again, on the right, we have our graphical view of the work instructions, and on the left, we have a, te a textual version uh, outlining what I'm actually performing in this, in this execution step. So in this instance, we're just aligning the parts on the assembly. Then on our parts tab, we can see the actual materials that are being assembled or consumed uh, by this execution step. So what we want to do, once we see those, we can actually select those and we can click Assemble. Once we click Assemble, what happens is this record of those materials is now saved back to the As Built and will be there until the end of time or the database you know, crashes. Another ability with the materials is to assign a serial number to them. So if there is a part that is you know, important enough to be tracked and be serialized, the system has the ability to either type in those, that information or it can be scanned in using a barcode scanner. Now for this execution step, I've performed my work, I've aligned all my materials, and I'm ready to complete that step. Now for that step, my starting time and my ending time for that step has now been completed and is now separate from the main operation. So you have that additional layer of time tracking not only at the operation level, but at the individual step or task level. Continuing with this operation, uh, we have our next step, which is actually retrieving a tool. So we can see just, again, textual work instructions on the left, graphical here on the right. And now instead of a material, uh, we're actually going to define the serial number of a torque wrench. So what the system allows is the use of certifications for tools. So say they, um, a certain tool needs to be recalibrated every two weeks. And to use that tool, that calibration has to be done. What the system can do is through, through the use of certifications, actually query what tools are in the system and see if they're within that certification. So say for this instance, if I try to use my tool, the system will give me a warning error that says that I cannot use this tool because it does not exist. But if I use the correct tool that is within certification, I'm able to put that information in and actually use that tool. 
And again, just like the materials, that tool is saved back to the as built and will be there um, in the database against that operation, against that work order, and against that operator who's actually using that tool. So again, as I continue my work, I collect my tool, I perform the, op the task in that execution step, I can go ahead and complete that. The next step we have in this operation is actually fastening the bolts onto the assembly. So we can see, again, individual work instructions for this execution step. In this instance, we're actually recording the bolt torques for the, 14, for the 12, um, for this execution step, we're actually recording the torque values for the bolts um, for these, for the 10 bolts. Um, so again, we have parts. that we're actually consuming and using in this execution step. So again, just like the previous step, we're going to select them and click the assemble button. So this will keep track of those materials and be saved back in the as-built record. So we can see exactly what materials are used for which operations and in what work orders. And then our tools, we can see that we have the torque wrench that we serialized in the previous execution step already ready to be used in this one. So we can skip the tools for this and go right to our data collection. So these data collection forms are actually defined in Team Center. Um, and it's going to allow the operator on the shop floor to input these data collection values. And those values can uh, be set against a certain specification. So if there's an upper limit, a lower limit, um, an expected value, and then there can be additional properties associated to this, these data collection points. So these values, just like the materials and tools to be serialized, they can either be input manually uh, via typing via keyboard, or they could be input from an electronic gauge so something like a USB connected gauge or something with Bluetooth. So what I'll do is I'll input some values into these fields and then save the data collection values. Once I hit save, those values are again saved back to the as built record and can be viewable by a supervisor or another operator at any time. Now that I've collected those values, um, hypothetically, maybe my, my tool does not fit uh, into the assembly to actually record those values. In that instance, what I would have to do is actually create a nonconformance and alert either a supervisor or actually escalate up to Team Center. That way these, the process could be um, changed or adjusted to fit this, this new finding. To do this, what we would do is we would use the defects button. And this is where we can define a defects group. And then inside of that defect group, we can define defect types to uh, give more information about what is actually happening. Then after that nonconformance defect is actually created by an operator, this can be escalated to a supervisor, which can then be escalated to, uh, to Team Center to actually close the loop. Alongside nonconformance's defects, we also have the change management. So this would be a change to the actual work order. So that's adding or removing an operation, add or removing a tool, or maybe adding a data collection. And then next to that, we also have the notes. 
So this is where your operator could leave notes for maybe the next operator on the next shift or to a supervisor to relay information without physically going and talking to them. As well as these notes can be sent back from a supervisor to an operator the same way. And these notes would need to be acknowledged before actually completing the execution step or the operation. So now that I've completed all my work for this operation, I've completed all the execution steps, I've recorded all the serialized information or non-serialized information for the materials and the tools, what I can actually do now is complete the operation. So this would essentially clock me out of that operation and I've now completed all the work and I'm ready to either move on to the next operation or to another work order. Another feature of the MES system is the ability to allow certain operators to perform certain operations. So these certifications can be put against a work center, a final material, or a machine inside of a work center. So in this instance, myself as an operator, operator one was able to complete the first two installing the left hand knuckle and installing the right hand knuckle. But they don't actually have certification to install the stabilizer bars. Alongside those features that we saw, there was also additional features uh, such as certification to allow certain operators to perform certain actions inside the system. For example, uh, the certification for an operator to only perform work at a certain work center. There's also the ability to assign an electronic signature on operations. That way there's another set of eyes that actually checks off the operation, the operation's work and that it was completed correctly, as well as the option to buy off of an operation. So an external uh, uh, operator group will receive a notification, have to actually acknowledge that notification and buy off the work that was completed for that. So at this time, what I'll do is I'll pass it back to Matt, who will go through a quick summary of what we looked at here today. Thank you, Tyler. So to recap what we saw within Somatic IT, first we were able to train and guide our operators in, in performing their activities through work instructions, on the shop floor terminals. We were also able to record data on the shop floor, so such as those torque values that we saw recorded in our as-built record. And as a result of this tool, we can reduce efficiency losses that typically result from new plant ramp-ups. And finally, we were able to extend the, dig the digital thread. So by using our manufacturing and engineering data in Team Center MPP, we were able to send it to the shop floor in order to support the production process. So to recap all of these elements that we saw in this presentation, we started the digital thread within Team Center Manufacturing Process Planner where we used and reused our engineering data to create and organize our manufacturing data to create a process plan for the production processes of this new line. We then designed and optimized a new plant floor layout with plant simulation and identified potential bottlenecks. Next, we used process simulate to analyze the specific operations, studying the ergonomics and times associated to the process. Then we finally leveraged our manufacturing data on the shop floor to guide operators in the production of this new tractor. And as a result of these tools, we have set the foundation for digital manufacturing for this facility, which can then be leveraged and enhanced in the future as we develop new products. 
So for anybody that's interested in learning more about Manufacturing Process Planner, Plant Simulation, Process Simulate, or the MES Tool Somatic IT, we'd be happy to do uh, further calls and demonstrations. This was just a very high-level overview of the capabilities. There's, of course, many more functionalities and uh, value that can be added that we would be happy to discuss further with anyone. Um, so please contact us if you're interested in learning more. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time.